And welcome Flip Clock fans. You're looking at a Copal. Copal model LP245. I've wanted to get one of these in my hands for quite a while. Let's look a little bit more at this Copal LP245. Well, it started showing up in the newspapers in about 1977. It's a great gift for your mother for Mother's Day back in the 70s. It says, softly lit at night, the new model Copal LP245 Cat's Eye. I wonder if that's what they call it. Black light illumination controlled by built-in light meter. It's got a photo cell in it. Automatically dims at night, wood grain finish, available as RP240 in standard neon illumination. It was in the newspapers up until about 1979 and then it kind of disappeared. It was probably a late entry into Copal's lineup because it didn't really show up in the catalogs that I know of. It's a nicely designed little clock and it's black light. Not only that, it's got some great font there for the digits. It's very unique and it's got a balanced look. They've put the motor in the back so that the numbers are almost right in the center there. These are subtle and simple changes, but it's a really, really awesome little clock. We're going to take a, a closer look at this and there's the black light. What a, what a great little addition there to the style here of this clock. It's a great little flipper. It just feels good when it's flipping. It's, everything's made well. You can see on the top there, that's a little opening by this uh, alarm set. You can see the, the whirly gig there spinning around. That's unique. I've never had a clock that had the so-called operation indicator on the top like that. I've seen these online before. I didn't know it had that on the top like that until I got it. I like the I like the profile this thing has. Little chip there. It came that way. But that's okay, because I just wanted to get a get a good look at one of these clocks. Of course we're gonna work on disassembly and boy that's gonna be a piece of work. You'll find out here in a minute what I'm talking about. Not just getting these knobs off, but this is your simple standard procedure here. We're gonna take away a couple screws there in the bottom the back there and just pull off this knob with brute force. The time set has a metal band and this is just plastic on plastic. Turn the alarm set. And you've got two screws to take out. That's the least of our worries as you're going to find out in a minute. This clock was put together, I believe, to not be taken apart. There's a trick to it, and it takes me a while to learn this. You're going to see me struggle with it for a little bit here. So you know there's tabs in there, but these are tabs on steroids. They're locking tabs, and I'll, sh I'll get you a better look at that here later. What I did, I do what I, what I tell all people who are working on the clocks. I took my time. We finally did get it apart, so we're going to look at it apart first, and then we'll talk about it more later. So this is the front piece. It's got a kind of a smoky look to it. Probably complements it that way, and there's my crack. It's not too bad. Now right there you can see part of the tab that's going to interlock with the cabinet tab there. It's not just, and you see that there's no give on the bottom to try to push that in to release it. The only give is going to be right there on the out on the cabinet itself. So I think that ends up being the trick is you have to you have to release it that way because you can't push in on the tabs on the bottom there. That is a struggle. There's our alarm on and off kind of a complicated mechanism just to move this, whoa, 
move this bar back and forth. I didn't get shocked. It just scares me when that does that. I set the alarm off there. You see, here's our photo cell. It has its own little circuit board back here. Its purpose is to dim when it gets darker, so you don't need as much illumination at night, evidently. So that's its role. Later I tested it, I did it off camera. And it does still work, but it only dims it just slightly. There's our green neon glow bulb. So that green complements the black light that goes against the green numerals. You can see the black light tube there. Now what's unique here, you may not know this, is quite often those tubes are not operational at this point. So I'm kind of lucky to have one like that. Now the green neon here, I'm going to replace that. I was lucky enough to get a stock of those. New old stock, green neon bulbs that are just perfect. Perfect for this application. Comes with their own resistors too. So I got real lucky on that years ago. Back in the early days. Let's see our layout here. We've got some room here. So if a person wanted to put a AC to DC converter, say to 12 volts, and then replace that bulb in the front with LEDs, it would be kind of convenient because there's room here to put a AC to DC converter back there. Just kind of giving it a good look over here. Thinking about how I'm gonna get it back together. There's that tube there. You see, that's working better than a lot of older clocks that I've heard about. It's kind of a wonder that it's still operational. That, the power comes off that circuit board where the photo cell is. Somehow controlling the Possibly controlling the voltage to dim that light. That's just kind of curious. Kind of seems a little bit unnecessary, but there it is. Bulb doesn't run hot at all. Really a, a nice look to this clock. This is after I've replaced that green neon. You see, it complements those numbers very nicely. Turned out really good. But again, the black light, that was original. I got really fortunate there. So I got a crack, but I got a black light bulb that's working great. Now here's the thing, I'm gonna show you how to get this back together, which may give you some ideas on how I'm gonna get it apart. I was just going to let it go because I did struggle getting it apart, but you know, if I'm going to make one of these videos, maybe I can make something that helps somebody, maybe give them an idea of how to get the clock apart better than I did originally. Now the thing you got to look at here is that you got to make sure you know which position that's in. It's in the on position. So I gotta make sure my switch is in the on position when I assemble. But beyond that, it's the assembly is a snap, so to speak. It just lines right up and you just push down. Really, really easy assembly. I'm taking my time here, but but it is made to snap in and to not be undone very well. And we're gonna see how we can overcome that. Perhaps you have figured out a way for yourself to do that. But you can take a look at my method and see what you think. All right, so we'll take a look at this. Let's just say we've taken the knobs off. How are we gonna get that apart? We know a little bit. We don't need to bother anything about that button on top. All we've got are tabs. We've got the tabs in the back, two in the back and one on each side and we know they're interlocking we know that the only thing that's going to give is the cabinet so take a look at this and see what you think so what i'm going to do is just give it a little pressure that uh, screwdriver is not impacting the case at all where it's going to mar the case 
so it starts, it almost takes the back off by itself. I'm kind of working it around. And what you may not know is this side is the problem child. This is the one that's going to hold back and try to prevent you from getting it apart. I thought of a lot of different ways to do that, but this is what I came up with. I'm taking me a razor blade here. You want to get it as close to that tab as you can and then pry it up. So again, I think that works well because it doesn't mar the case. It actually comes apart really easily if you go that, if you follow that procedure there. Like I said, to me, it seems like the best way. Maybe you know a better way. But there it is, the Copal LP245, the Whirly Gig just going to town there. It's got the black light. Again, very fortunate to have a functional black light. I don't know if it's as good as it was in the in its day, but working pretty good. Looks great. I'm not disappointed. I'm really glad I got a hold of one of these and maybe our little discussion today might help somebody who's trying to restore one. Well, thanks for taking the time.